G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru and today I've got a really interesting tutorial I think um, that sort of follows on from my last video where we looked at getting the parent view of views in Revit um, using Dynamo and Python. Um, we, could, we could technically chain these methods together to find the parents of the parents of the parents of the parents um, to find every single possible child-parent relationship from a view. Um, but the problem is that we don't know how deep this family tree of views goes, right? It could be five levels, it could be six, I mean, God forbid it could be 99. Um, but if any of those parents above the next parent are deleted, it takes the whole family out with it. So we do need to find a way in order to protect the entire family of views if we're going to protect the views overall. So in this case, um, I am going to keep using the same Python script from before, but we're going to modify it using a while loop. So while loops can be quite dangerous because they can effectively run forever if you don't set them up well. You're actually going to see in this tutorial um, that it's really important to add what I call a circuit breaker, which will stop the while loop running forever. Um, so, and it actually becomes useful in this tutorial, trust me. Um, so uh, let's get started, I guess. I mean, we're just using our previous script, um, so feel free to download that from my GitHub. Um, but otherwise, hope you enjoy. Okay, so on the last video I recorded for this, which I recommend you go back and watch if you haven't already, um, we're going to expand upon a function which finds the parents of views. So if a callout comes from another view, that view is its parent. But what happens if that callout comes from a view that's a callout, that's a view that's a callout, etc, etc, etc. Well, then we might have a bigger problem because if we delete one of the parents, then the child is deleted as well. Um, so we do need to protect the ancestry of that view to the very top to make sure that if we're doing something like deleting unplaced views, not on sheets, um, even though the child might be on a sheet, maybe the parent's not. So we need to make sure that we're not going to go and get rid of that parent relationship because that will delete the child anyway, just because of the way Revit behaves. Um, so in this case, uh, the point that we've got to at this point is we've used a Python script, which at this point is taking all the views and then for each view, it's checking their parent and then it's appending it to a list um, and building a list of only parents as well. And then we're sending out that list of parents per view, um, whether it has a parent and also uh, the parents on their own. This means you can do things like build a custom node, which you can just exhaust the parents of by sending it through the only parents to parent view over and over again until there's no parents left to find. And you can see here that we've run out of parent options. And then we join them together and we use the unique items node in order to protect all those views that have a parent relationship. Now, the problem with this, obviously, is that we haven't quite solved the problem because what if you have you know, 99 levels of callout nesting? You're not gonna wanna put 99 of these in a row. It's not efficient. If you wanna do something over and over again until you've run out of options, uh, the way to do this in Python and Dynamo is to use a while loop. Now, a while loop is quite dangerous because it runs until a condition isn't satisfied. So I'm gonna show you how you can also protect the while loop as well, um, but let's get started. So we're gonna start with our Python script. So I do recommend that you download the sample file from the last tutorial from GitHub. But in this case, I'm just gonna start editing this Python script. So we are gonna be working with the same, the same function, but just modifying it to suit. We are gonna be making it quite different. Um, so what I'm gonna do is probably switch over to manual mode so that nothing runs until we tell it to. Okay, so we're going to be working with pretty much everything the same until the point where we declare our view list. So at this point we have each view. Now we're going to change these variables. We want to send some different variables out. We're still going to use three. So what we're going to do now is look at the family tree of the view per se. So we're going to get every single parent and grandparent, great grandparent of that view and put them into a list. So in this case, I'm firstly just going to say this is going to be all the family trees. We're also going to say how deep is that tree? What is the level of nesting in that in that list? So we'll say that by default, every view is a level of one. If it has a parent, it's a level of two, etc., etc. Okay. We're also just going to say, does it have parents again? So we're going to be modifying our function to some degree. We're going to turn this try accept statement into, in this case, a while loop. So a while loop, a while loop effectively just keeps going forever until a condition isn't satisfied. So in this case in Revit, if your while loop never finishes, Revit will just freeze and crash. So we have to be very careful. So in this case, I'm going to establish a few variables for each view. So what I'm doing now is defining what are called local variables. They're local to this loop. Um, so each time the loop runs, it's going to re-establish those variables. So first of all, I'm going to firstly just make a really important variable called breaker. Um, this is effectively what I call a circuit breaker. 
it's going to be part of my while loop and it's going to have a limit. I'm going to set a limit on my while loop to 99 and say if my while loop for some reason just goes all the way to 99, stop. Otherwise, it could just keep going forever. So this is effectively the thing that breaks the circuit. Um, effectively, this loop should never go forever, um, but I like to build them in just to be safe. Especially if I'm sending out like a package in the public domain. Um, if you put out a while loop that can crash someone's model, not good. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna do is say, what is the view that we're checking for a parent? Because we're gonna keep going through each parent each time in the while loop. So I'm gonna say in this case, check view is equal to V. So the, the view that we're looking at is gonna begin as the check view. I'm then gonna say that my tree depth is one. So we're beginning at one. I'm gonna say my view tree or my family tree is an empty list. Currently there's nothing in this tree. Now you could add in this case um, the check view if you wanted to. Maybe it belongs to its own family tree. It's up to you. Um, in this case, I'm just gonna exclude it and say we're only looking at the parents of that view. I'm then gonna say, are we going deeper in our loop? So is the loop continuing? And by default, we wanna do it at least once just to check. So I'm gonna say, true, we wanna keep going. I'm now gonna establish a while loop. So I'm gonna say while, and we're gonna use two conditions. The first one is, are we going deeper? Going deeper is a Boolean, so it's implied. You don't have to say going deeper equals true. You just have to say go deeper. It implies the condition of true. We're also gonna add another condition. So I'm gonna say and, and I'm gonna say is the breaker less than 99? So if either of these conditions aren't satisfied, the loop will stop. So in this case, if our circuit breaker kicks in, the while loop will stop. Okay. So I'm gonna say in this case that first of all, the breaker is equal to the breaker plus one. A really useful Python syntax is to say plus equals one, which means take that variable and add one to it and make that the new variable. So breaker is now just itself plus one. In this case, um, I'm gonna to have to indent everything from this point because we're inside a while loop. So I'm gonna indent my breaker, indent my try, and I'm just gonna indent everything to begin with, but I am gonna go back and have to modify this statement a little bit. It doesn't work exactly as is. Okay, so to begin with, we are still gonna go and get the parent ID um, as we did before. But in this case, instead of getting the parent element, this is gonna be the check view. So now the check view goes up one, if it could go up one. So I'm gonna say the check view is now that element. In this case, I don't need to add this to a parent list. So I can, in this case, just remove that. I'm now gonna say if the check view is equal to none instead. So every reference to the parent view that I used before is now this check view. We're just doing this check view. Now in this case, the first thing we need to do, so I'm actually probably just going to replace all of these things inside my if statement. So what I'll do is just delete all these. So the first thing we need to do is say that the tree depth is going to go up by one because we have a valid parent. So tree depth, plus equal one, so it's got one bigger. Remember this isn't happening if there's not a parent. From here, we're gonna take the view tree, which is currently a list inside our statement, and I'm just gonna append in this case, the view that we've just checked. Remember that the check view is now the parent view, not the view we started with. Um, in this case, um, go deeper is still true. We just leave it as true. But otherwise, now go deeper is false because we ran out of options. There's nothing left to do. Remember, we're still inside a try accept statement as well. So we do need to go and add the accept condition. And I'm gonna say accept, go deeper equals false. So we're effectively terminating our while loop as soon as we run out of parents because we know that we have nowhere, nowhere left to go at this point. We can now get rid of that accept. And that is effectively our while loop. So it's a little bit different to what we started with, um, but effectively it's quite strong uh, because it will keep going until it runs out of options. Now, the last thing we need to do is add those potential variables onto the major list because now we probably have a list of lists. Um, so what we're gonna do is take all trees and I'm gonna append in this case, the view tree. If it has any, it might be empty. It might be an empty list. I'm gonna say that all depths, we're gonna append on the tree depth. And for has parents, um, we're gonna say in this case that we can actually just check this based on whether there's more than one tree depth. So now I'm just gonna say has parents is tree depth greater than one. 
And this sort of makes our function just a little bit more efficient because it only has to check one thing rather than appending inside a loop. Okay, so finally, we're going to take those three variables. We're going to save our function and hopefully it should work. Let's have a look at our output. So in this case, we have an empty list. No, so it looks like in this case, I've missed something. Notice our loop is going until it gets to 99. So our loop isn't escaping. Something is missing here. So just trying to see where it is. Something's definitely going wrong here. Hmm. It's probably something to do with the check view and go deeper because go deeper is obviously not uh, not being set to false. So there's something I've missed. Interesting. Hmm. I do have a reference I'm looking at just to make sure that I don't um you know run out of options for what I'm looking for. But it seems like in this case I can't see what it is. Interesting. Check view. I thought maybe it might be the check. Ah, oh, I see it exactly. Here it is. So what I've done is I've actually kept calling on the view that we're looping over. <laughs> so it's never actually checking the check view. So what we actually need to do is check the check view. There we go. Now it's going to go and use the next view in the cycle. So it's little things like that that can trip you up sometimes in Python. Um, but that's why it's really good that we added the breaker because the breaker stopped our loop going forever. <laughs> so it's probably actually a good thing that happened. Um, now if I run, there we go. So now we can see that our parent, our parent relationship is stopping. Um, once it hits a certain point. So we can see here that there's one parent for this one. We can also then see some of them go quite deep. Some have maybe three or four ancestors. And now we can see that some of them are one, some are three, some are two, etc., etc. And in this case, we can also see that some do have parents. Um, so we've effectively taken uh, this and turned it into this. Um, because what we can do from here is just run a unique items over the uh, third output in this case, I think it is. Uh, which is the second index, or the index two. Uh, whoops, must be index. Ah, of course, index is zero. Hmm. Ah, I need to flatten it because it's full of sublists, of course. So now we've flattened all those all those parent views, and there we go. We've got the same the same nine views that we achieved through this exhaustive function, all achieved through a simple Python script. And of course, as always, um, I have packaged this into a custom node in my package, which will be out quite soon. It's on my GitHub currently. Um, that effectively just does the same, the same thing. So again, a really unique outcome um, that isn't available currently in Dynamo. And whilst you can get a parent view of one view, you can't exhaust that lineage or ancestry of the view like this node does. So a really good use case for Python, really wanted to share it. Um, so hopefully it's a really interesting use case and teaches you more about Python as well. So there we go, um, a pretty powerful function that I haven't seen in any custom packages before um, that's now available in my own custom package, uh, Crumple. It's not currently on the package manager in this version at this time, but you can access it on my GitHub if you want a sneak peek, um, but in the next official release, it will be in there. I try not to do too many releases because I'm a Python based package, so I know that updates can be quite annoying because you do have to swap the nodes out, unlike a zero touch package. Um, anyway, hopefully that taught you more about Python. Remember, there is a playlist over on my channel where you can learn about Python and also one where you can learn about Dynamo and Python. Anyway, um, if you're not already following and subscribing, uh, feel free to do so. And I look forward to seeing you on future similar videos. Thanks, take care, bye. Thank you.